The Lightroom CC 2015.7 update was released this morning. Some new features have been added and a few, strangely, that I really like have been taken away. We're not going to worry about the minor things that have been removed today, though. Instead, there is one new feature, a new publish service option, that is the subject for this tutorial. In this update, there is a new option that will let anyone using Lightroom CC submit photos to the new Adobe Stock platform. Adobe Stock is a royalty-free image marketplace. Basically, this is what Adobe created with their acquisition of the Photolia stock company a few years ago. I'm gonna focus on this new feature today for two reasons. A, because I think it's an easy way for folks like me to earn a tiny amount of money from images that might otherwise have languished on some old hard drive forever. I don't think that you're gonna get rich here, but a little bit of money for images that you were willing to see used in stock is better than nothing. B, this is the perfect chance to show off the power of metadata and of smart collections once again. So now let's talk about what this new Adobe Stock Published Service is all about. So here I am inside my Adobe Photoshop Lightroom catalog. Now before this video, I went and used the Creative Cloud app installer to install the most recent update. If you haven't yet and you want to follow along today and you're a Lightroom CC customer, you'll need to install the update via this box here. So once you've updated your Lightroom, and I'll show you here, I am running Lightroom uh, version 2015.7. That's the release that includes this new published service. You'll see this in the published services area of the library module. Now I've already configured mine for today's demo. All I did is I went in here and I created a contributor account I learned about what type of images the Adobe Stock Agency will accept, and then I got ready to upload some files. Once I have it configured, all I need to do to send photos to the Adobe Stock review process is pick a file that I want to send. In this case, I'm going to pick these three strawberries here, for example. I drag them over to the Public Service plugin. So I've made mine say submit to Adobe Stock and I drop. Now that doesn't send it anywhere. What I have to do next is click there like it was a collection. And you'll see at this point that I have these two that I sent up earlier today. And I have this one that I have not yet published, meaning sent a copy to Adobe for review. To publish it, I can click either this publish button here or this publish button down there. But for files to be accepted, they will need keywords and a title. I could do that online, but I think it's more efficient to do that here in Lightroom before I send my files up. So I'm gonna click on this file again. I'm gonna open up the keywording panel to see if I have, say, five keywords. In this case, I have food, strawberries, close up. I might call this, say, uh, fruit for the uh, type of season. We might say summer, something like that. For a title, I need to open up the metadata tab and you'll see down here where it says title. And I'll type in three strawberries on a blue plate. So now I have some keywords and I have my title. So all I gotta do is push this publish button or that publish button. Now, I've already got an account at Adobe Stock. I have that from my years with Photolia. Right now, Lightroom is making a JPEG copy of this file and it is uploading it to my account for me. We'll pause here while it uploads. When the upload finishes, this box will pop up that says to tag your assets and submit them to, for review, continue to Adobe Stock. So I'll click that button right there. That will bring me to the web. It will bring me to my page at Adobe Stock. And you'll see here where there's my photo, but right now its status as is incomplete. It's incomplete until it has five keywords, one, two, three, four, five, and a title. And then I have to pick a category and if there were model releases involved, I have to deal with that down here. Well, 
First, let's look at these keywords since the title's already there. In the keywords, what I'm gonna do is drag to reorder them into the order uh, that makes sense. So I'm gonna say strawberries, fruit, food, close up, summer. If I wanted to add additional keywords, I could type them in here. So where it says select a category, I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna come down to say, how about food for the category here? In this case, there are no recognizable people or property. So I'm gonna click no. And now I can say, save my work. And that will begin the submission process when I click this button. Now at the moment, Adobe is still verifying my ID. I had to upload a copy of my driver's license, but I can go ahead and submit it. Once my ID has been approved, then they will moderate my content, meaning they will say whether they think this image is good enough to be included in their stock library. So on that subject, let's hop over to the FAQs page at uh, adobe.com stock contributor. So at the Adobe stock site, you'll find some helpful FAQ pages. And I bring this up because I'm gonna show you in a second a way that we can make this what we send to stock more efficient. But to understand that, I think we have to see the rules. Right now, Adobe stock will only take photos or illustration in the JPEG format with a minimum resolution of about four megapixels. The files should be JPEG. We can upload them directly from Lightroom. But down here is where it says it must have a title. It must have keywords. There's info about model releases, when you might need them, etc. So here's what I have to show, a little trick. See, I have hundreds and hundreds of photos that I think might be saleable in stock. So what I could do is go all photographs and I could begin to dig through all of the images I've ever taken, hundreds and hundreds of photos, looking for stuff that might be stock worthy. But that's pretty inefficient. Instead, I'm gonna make use of the organizational system that I already have, my metadata, my keywords, my colored labels, to help me narrow down the field of images that might be worth submitting. What I'm gonna do is go to my collections panel. Now, I already have a smart collection that looks for all of my green labeled files. In my world, when I see a photo that I like in Lightroom, I give it a red label. When I've worked on that photo, but I don't think it's perfect, I change its red label to yellow label. And when I've worked on a file to where I think it's perfect, then I up its status to green label. That's my own personal system. You can use stars, you can use whatever you want, but I find that quite helpful. So this smart collection, I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna go edit smart collection, just so you can see what it's doing. What it's doing is it's looking for all the files that meet the following rules. Label color is green. Well, that's pretty simple. So what I'm gonna do now is build a separate smart collection to gather up out of the green labels those that I think might be stock worthy. And I'll explain in here what I don't want to send to stock are photos like these. This is my sister. It's not that she wouldn't sign a model release, but I don't want pictures of my family, my friends out there. They're not professional models. At no point did my sister and I cut some agreement over licensing her, her likeness for advertising. That's just not what we are. We're family, we're friends. If you're in that model world, or if you have friends who are willing to sign a model release, then by all means, do so. Likewise, when I photograph things, some of what I photograph would be considered fair game, public view, like cityscapes or landmarks. Other things that I photograph, like this is the Churchill Northern Study Center, would require a property release. Unless you have those releases, be they for models or for recognizable property, these are not files you should be sending up to stock. So I'm gonna build a collection here, a smart collection, and I'm gonna call this smart collection, how about I'll make it say, to be considered for submission 
to Adobe Stock. That'll be the name of this smart collection. So now I'm gonna spell out some rules. The first rule I'm gonna spell out is that these files, so I'm gonna click there where it says rating, and I'm gonna come down to file type, where it says file tape, type slash type and pick file type. The first thing I'm gonna say is that these are not videos. So first rule, if there are videos in here, let's not see those. I'm gonna hit the little plus and say second. For me, the files that I consider worthy of display are the ones that have the green label. So label color is green. In that sense, it matches the smart collection that I showed you just a second ago. Next, I think it's most efficient if you only upload files that have a title. So I'm gonna add another rule. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna come down to other metadata and pick title. Now there isn't a choice that says title is not blank. So I'm gonna to have to get a little clever. What I'm gonna do in type is type in here, A comma space E comma space I comma space O comma space U. Because it would be impossible for me to spell out a title without vowels in the English language. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit create here just so you see what this brings us. That's gonna bring us this smart collection. And now here are the 347 files that meet these rules, meaning these are not videos, they have a green label, and I have typed something in the title box on every one of them already. Pretty slick. And I could go through here and say, yeah, this is stock worthy. I could drag it and I could drop it just like that. Now, if I went here, I could say, let's publish, let's send this one up to Adobe for review, but I can do better. Let me go back to that collection. I'm gonna right click and go edit smart collection. And I'm gonna add a few more rules because to be efficient, not only do I want it to have a title, but I also wanna be sure that it already has keywords. So I'm gonna add another rule. I'm gonna come here to where it says other metadata to keywords. And on this one, I do have the choice of aren't empty or isn't blank, what is what I should say. So now I can go save and that would eliminate anybody that's in here. You'll see that number just went down a little, which has a green label, but which I haven't keyworded yet. Now I'm gonna add one more here. And for this to make sense, let me pick a couple photos that I don't think I want to consider submitting for stock. Let me go back to this one. This is that Churchill Northern Study Center again. Let me show the photo bigger here. It's a beautiful building, but I have no right to sell its likeness for advertising without a signed release, a property release. So I'm going to add a keyword to this one. I'm going to add the keyword property. Now that didn't take it out of our grouping, but I'll show you in a second how that keyword can help. I'm gonna go back to say all these files. Let me scroll on down and find some people. Now these people probably aren't recognizable, but they didn't know that I was gonna take their picture. They weren't posing. I don't feel right about trying to sell their photo in stock, even if they don't ever see it. So I'm gonna add the keyword portrait here. Now, once I do that, I can say go G for grid again. Let me scroll on down. Here's my friend, Doug. Doug definitely didn't plan on being a model. So I'm again gonna add the keyword portrait. Now, why am I adding keywords like portrait or property? Well, I'm adding those, oops, let me escape out of there. I'm adding those because now I can go back to my smart collection I can right click and I can add one more rule. And the rule I'm gonna add is that also the keywords, so I'm gonna come down to other metadata, keywords do not contain, doesn't contain the keyword portrait or the keyword property. Now, obviously this does not prevent me from dragging any photo I want onto the submit to Adobe Stock publish service. It doesn't prevent me from uploading those files, but you'll notice now they're only 311 
that Churchill Northern Studies building has disappeared. The picture of Doug has disappeared. In fact, all of my pictures that would have had recognizable people on them. Oh, there's one I missed. These folks here. So I think I could get away with it, but I'm just going to add portrait and watch they drop out of this smart collection. Now, do I think that every one of these photos is going to sell? There's another. We'll just add, say, portrait, and they drop out. Do I think that every one of these photos is going to sell? No. Do I think that every one of these photos is worth sending? Not at all. But I think it's worth speeding up the process of picking files to upload. Now I'm going to add one last little trick in here. What I'm going to do so that I don't dig through the same stack of files again and again and again. And for this to make sense, let me show you that I have, say, these four, three that have been submitted and one that hasn't. And really, this one, it needs a green label. So I'll press the number eight to give it that green label. Here are four that either have been submitted or would be submitted as soon as I hit the publish button. Here are 310 that I would consider, but notice this one and that one, they're already in the queue or have been submitted down here. So I'm gonna to go to my smart collection one more time. I'm gonna right click, go edit smart collection. I'm gonna add one last rule to the bottom. I'm gonna hit the little plus and say in this case that the source, the published collection doesn't contain Adobe stock. And what I'm basically saying is that if it's already in this grouping down here, I don't want to see it in the to be considered smart collection anymore. So when I hit save, this will drop from 310 to 306. Sweet. So let's say that I wanted to submit a couple of these. We'll pick this series of night photos right here. I think these are all perfectly fine for stock, to show them to you a little bigger. Stock, 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 perfectly worthy, great. Now I can drag them, I can drop them. As soon as I drop them on there, they disappear from the to be considered group. And now they're here waiting for me to hit publish to send them on up to Adobe. Once a copy gets there, I'll have to check on those keywords. I'll have to agree that no property releases are required, but getting these files up to Adobe now couldn't be easier. Let me show you the rules for that smart collection one more time. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go edit smart collection. This is the way I set this up. File type is not video, label color is green, Again, in my system, green means a file that I think is perfect. You might be using stars, star rating for that. Title contains all the vowels in English. Keywords aren't empty. Keywords does not contain my keyword for something that would need a property release or a model release. And for that, I use the keyword portrait and that the published service doesn't contain Adobe stock. I hope you found this interesting. If you're willing to, I encourage you to set up the new Publish Service plugin, send some images up there, see if they get accepted. You might make some money selling your photos through Adobe Stock.